Okay, so now we're going to talk about green construction and plumbing or plumbing systems, which are really critical aspect of sustainability depending on where you live. If you live in California right now, then you're probably paying very close attention to plumbing and how plumbing deals with water. And we want to think about how we can specify fixtures that have low flow rates. Now, of course, having done a couple mixed use projects with residential, there's a lot of backlash against low flow shower heads. They now have dual flow shower heads where you can pick low or high, which should help reduce some of the water. And certainly water heaters now can become very, are, become very, very efficient. Um, you can look at instantaneous tankless hot water heating, which um, uses gas or electric. And you know my position on this, I always think gas is better for heating water because it's quicker and uses less overall energy than electricity. Um, however, where that gas is coming from, how it's extracted, how it's transported and used comes into a factor there. So, um, uh, so there's lots of ways to think about how we deliver hot water. We can um, deliver it actually to the, I mean, this is kind of an interesting thing, is you actually heat the water right at the unit rather than trying to send hot water all through your house. And I think that's a pretty cool uh, strategy there. You always, in sustainability, we're always trying to decentralize um, and distribute all of our energy and systems so that everything is done on site or local. We tend not to want to go for those big central um, infrastructure if we can do it. So that's pretty on demand, really on demand. And uh, so that's, that's a pretty cool one. Then we have our dual flush toilets, one for one, two for two. Um, again, I can't believe that this isn't required in California. It would save huge amounts of water. We're using drinking water in our toilets or potable water in our toilets, makes no sense. Um, and so all of these appliances are out there now to save water and we should really be trying to use them. I have three of these in our house, haven't seen any major problems with them. They seem to work great. Really, really love them. Irrigation. Of course, we shouldn't have any irrigation, but if we had to, we want to use low volume drip irrigation. That's kind of obvious. And we want to have different kinds of irrigation depending on what we're growing. And uh, we, want it, we want it to read the weather. So you can have your irrigation system connected to the internet. It knows when the rain is coming. It knows when it's not raining. And then it will not irrigate when the rain is coming. Again, all of this to me is all about smart design smart construction and smart maintenance. So I hope that you're all getting that sense by watching these. Not necessarily sustainable, just common sense. Certainly, why wouldn't we collect all of the rainwater? Why would we not use that and flush toilets with it? So now we have a, essentially a net zero water situation um, given our climate if it's possible. Pretty interesting stuff. And um, if, you could, if you have to move the water, you can actually use solar panels to pump water across site. So the other thing is we can have a living machine, which is actually processing the gray or black water directly on site and cleaning it for either reuse in the toilets or actually sending it back out into the land already cleaned through um, a series of tanks, which generates its own ecosystem and cleans everything up. So I hope you enjoyed plumbing. Next up, we're going to be looking at site work, and um, I hope you'll enjoy that as well. Thank you.